بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مغفرته Respected brothers and sisters of Islam, today inshallah I would like to do the second part to the, the topic of common errors in Salah and inshallah today I would like to cover a few rulings related to the Ghusl. Now as you know that Ghusl bathing has three faraid, three obligations. Number one is to wash the entire mouth. Now, if you're not fasting, then it is necessary for you to gargle the mouth so that the water can reach the end of the mouth. And if there's any gap between the teeth, you have to make sure that water goes through those gaps. If there's any food stuck in between those teeth, you have to also make sure you remove, you floss or remove uh, those food from your teeth. So that the entire mouth is washed thoroughly. The second and most important, and all are important, but the most common error people make is with the second fault, and that is washing the, the nose. Now, when ghusl becomes fault, you have to make sure the water reaches the soft bone where it might hurt. So you have to take water in the hand, and literally you have to sniff water so that. It reaches the soft bone and you have to clean anything which is inside and clean your nose thoroughly. You have to clean the entire nose thoroughly. This is fault. And the third part, the third fault aspect is to wash the entire body, not leaving a single hair dry. So you have to make sure that you wash underneath your arm, um, behind the knees, between the legs. You have to make sure especially men, that you wash the roots of, um, of the hair. This is very important. And if the women, if the hair is loose, then of course they have to wash the, the entire hair. <coughs> and you have to make sure you wash the entire body thoroughly, not leaving a single hair dry, otherwise your ghusl will not be accepted. So this was to do with ghusl. Now very quickly talking about salah, just few important rulings. Now as you can see, um, the weather is nice and hot. And many brothers, they tend to wear t-shirts. Now in salah, to wear t-shirts is makrut and zihi. A minor offense. In other words, there will be a reduction in your reward. So it is better, far better, to wear something that will cover the entire arm. That's number one. Number two, <coughs> if you were to wear t-shirts, for example, though namaz would be valid, but it would be makur tanzihi, but you have to be very careful that when ruku and sujood in prostration, the back doesn't get ex exposed. Now some people will see, we're going to ruku, and subhanallah, you know, the brothers in front of us, they're going to sajda, you know, it's a full distraction because the entire back is exposed. And to cover, you know, from navel to knees, front and back is fault. So you're exposing your aura and namaz will become invalidated. Number three is, if you were to wear something like this, a collarless jabba or a shirt, a t-shirt, then you have to make sure that the collarbone is not exposed. Now, mine is covered, <coughs> so namaz will be valid. But sometimes, or if you were to unfasten the button, and if the collarbone becomes visible, your namaz becomes makruh. So please make sure that um, the collarbone is not visible. Number three, number four, is to do with sleeves. And that is that <coughs> in prayer, it is makruh tahrimi to roll up your sleeves halfway or more uh, uh, in the forearm. So for example, as you can see, to roll up your sleeves halfway up above the forearm, this becomes makrut ahli. Some brothers have seen in, in summertime, hot weathers, or even after wudu, they come and they start the prayer. If your sleeves are rolled up like this, or even the trousers, if you were to fold your trousers, your namaz, your salah becomes makrut tahrimi. That means you have to repeat the prayer. So you have to make sure that you <coughs> unroll your sleeves, 
on your uh, trousers. This is very important. Number five, and that is to do with jewelry. Men are not allowed to wear anything. It is haram for men to wear any jewelry except one silver ring. One silver ring that weighs no more than 4.3 grams. And the condition is that you need to have a stone. So if it's a, a band, you know, uh, stoneless or diamondless ring, or if you were to wear two silver rings, then your salah becomes makruh tahrim. To wear such uh, rings is haram, but in namaz, namaz becomes makruh tahrim. So if you were to wear wedding ring, for example, or if girls, <coughs> sisters were to give a gift, a ring gift to the brothers, then make sure it's 4.3 grams silver, it needs to have a stone. Okay, men are not allowed to wear a ring without a stone. That's the condition. Now, some people they wear taweed, and the taweed, uh, the actual uh, chain, is made out of um, is made out of uh, metal instead of thread. And again, uh, even if it's silver for men, it is makru tahrimi of to wear that is haram. And in salah it becomes makru tahrimi. Bracelets, wristlets, um, you know, studs, na'udhu billah for men, all these things are haram. <coughs> Women were only allowed to wear gold and silver. Any other metal you should remove in prayer because the mask becomes makru tahrimi. And lastly, is about scratching and moving your hand. In salah, if you were to move both of your hands in any position to rectify something, Okay, to rectify your jubba, to rectify your topi, or your beard, example. Or once you're going to such that some people, they lift the jubba, the trousers up, using both of their hands, then the mask becomes makro tahrimi. Now, if you urge of scratching, you should not move your hand more than twice. You're allowed to scratch twice in per position. So twice in qiyam, twice in ruku, twice in sujood, twice in qaida. As soon as you lift your hand for the third time in one position, your salah will break. So you scratch once, twice, <coughs> and as soon as you lift for the third time, your salah will become makro tahrimi. So I hope uh, this, these clips will be useful for you, and please spread these clips to other brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to le learn <coughs> the true aspects of deen, the masala, the hakam. The fiqhi rulings of uh, religion, inshallah. And if you do have any questions, inshallah, I will try and answer those questions in the next clips. Next clip, inshallah, the following clips, inshallah, which I'm going to produce. So please, you can um, text me your questions or write the questions underneath this clip. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.